Welcome back, my, my BMX nerd friends. This week, we got Colt Fake. He's a legendary savage rider from Florida. And uh, yeah, he's had an incredible BMX career. I've never really talked to him before, so it was cool to sit and chat for two hours. I hope you guys enjoy. Canode Knows is brought to you by Dig BMX. <clears throat> Share the show with your friends, like and subscribe, and uh, get into it. Here's Colt Fake. Oh shit, look at that. That's the scar. <laughs> what is it called in Fortnite? That gun. Yeah, it's a scar. It's a scar? Is that what it's called? Bra I it's been a minute, dude. Bra 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 bra. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I ain't never scared. Of all, the, of all the sections that you've put out, what's your favorite song that you had in a part? <clears throat> Probably Coxbar running right. Coxbar run what was that in? Band three. Band three. Beautiful. I just finished watching and, that. And it's so funny because well I'm thirty four now, but the one line in the song is uh I don't want to be living like you when I'm thirty three. <laughs> Getting old sure bothers me to death. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm 33, 34. Now I'm 34. How's getting old treating you? Uh, it's great, man. Um, no complaints. I'm, I'm being more con conscious now about health and you know, yeah, all those I, great things we were, that happens we when you get set, older. Yeah, we were setting this up, and you said, "I'm just getting back from the gym." What do you do at the What do you do at the gym? How often do you go? Oh yeah, I lost you. Can you. Yeah, now I can hear you. I I I, I, I adjusted the headphone and I accidentally yeah. clicked the mute. That's a good feature on gaming headsets. Mute. Fuck. Yeah. And then, <laughs> come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what do I focus on at the gym? Um. Do you have like a regiment that you follow, like off the internet or some shit, or I just wing just, it? I kind of just freestyle it. Just do whatever. Nice. And um. I don't know. I focus. I think I focus on chest the most because that's like the part that I wanted to grow the most. I was sick yeah. of having a you know flat chest. I wanted some boobies. Dude, me too. Trying try to Spartan chest. Trying to get some. Trying to get some boobies. <laughs> 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 but uh, so what? What actually got me into going to the gym was uh, at the end of 2020, um, I got hit by a car on my motorcycle. What? And yeah, it was in my neighborhood. So I ran out of paper towels. And uh, so I just threw on my, there's a dollar store right at the front of my neighborhood. So I just threw on my slides and was like, oh, I'm just going to run up and get some paper towels real quick. And this old lady coming the other way turned in her driveway right in front of me. So I like, you know, tried to avoid her, ended up hitting the front of her car in her driveway, doing like a cartwheel in the air and landing in her grass in her front yard. <laughs> <laughs> and uh whoa and uh yeah so i was speeding a little bit but nothing like crazy i was probably like neighborhoods are what like 25 i was probably going like 35 yeah but um cops came it was it was her fault um and so i went with dan newland to <laughs> to help me you know get paid for it and uh my this guy's had some was, sort of some like accident lawyer out there. Dan yeah. Newland. Okay. He's on the billboards. Yeah. We so, every state has their yep. own. Oh my God. That reminds me back in the day, back in the day, me and Kyle Painter driving around when we're going riding, like his billboards would have a forehead extension. <laughs> so you have a billboard that's a rectangle, right? Yeah his forehead would be an extension and we'd be a, <laughs> at a red light and I'd just be cracking up like, hey, like they intentionally made a forehead extension on these billboards. <laughs> but anyway, so my bike was considered totaled. So they paid for that. And then I, I went through Dan Newland so that, well, obviously I wanted to get some compensation, but also it paid for like my physical therapy and my MRI 
You say you, you took an ambulance? No, no. Oh, just, okay. Oh, you went through. Oh, you I were saying the dude's name. It sounded like Dan. You said you're saying like Dan Bulent or some shit, and I thought you said ambulance. Gone. You. Uh, it's no. feel. I feel like you're fine. You've crashed on your bike a thousand times. Were you? Did you get hurt? Bro, uh, par- partial tear in one of my ligaments in my knee. That was the worst of it. But bro, the older I get, the more I feel like fucking Wolverine. Like, I just regenerate quick, like really quick. Huh. Like, I have, so that was my Enduro 250. It was street legal. Uh, now I just have a 110 that's kind of like a pit bike. Yeah. I crashed on that. Re- I crashed on that recently and it wasn't that bad. I just like had um, like a scrape Some on my crash. face. Yeah. And it, it healed like in a couple days. I was like, damn, man, I just feel like. I'm Wolverine. Uh, <laughs> but okay, so the, it it got me. So going to physical therapy for my knee because that was part of, like, I just wanted my MRI to be paid for so I can make sure everything was okay. But I was going to uh, physical therapy, and um, that got me into going to the gym because they put me on some machines to like work everything out. Yeah. And and then after that, and then I healed quick from that too. So. After that was over, I just was like, oh, I still want to go to the gym. So I just started going to the gym. Fuck yeah. And, uh, yeah, so. That's something that you, And then I just. I imagine you didn't go to the gym your whole life, like, until this. this No, because I I used, because, because I used to ride bikes every day. So that's. Yeah. Like a gym. Yeah. But I don't, I, I don't ride bikes every day because of life. Yeah. Now. For real. It's not Same. as easy as when you were younger. So it's like, well, damn, I got to do something physical. Do you think you still have yeah, the same, like, to flame to ride as you used to? I do, but the thing now is it's not as convenient as it used to be. Yeah. Like, if I want to go, if I want to go ride more, and more specifically, if I want to go film, it's a whole task it's a whole it has to be planned out i have to find somebody that is also available the same time i'm available yeah it's just it's harder to it's harder to do i mean it's easy to go out and do it by myself but it's harder to plan it with a friend to go do it right and um and going to the gym my gym also has a racquetball court and a basketball court and so i get it i started getting into racquetball and basketball Sick. because it was convenient yeah it was convenient like i'd before i'd go work out i'd warm up with racquetball or basketball nice that's what's up and yeah and not that long ago i, re- I remember saying to my mom i was like it feels really weird that i have more of the urge right now to go get in a pickup game of basketball than i do to go ride my bike <laughs> <laughs> well shit changes man that's but like it's just it's but it's just because of the convenience. I yeah. can I can go right down I can go right down the street and there's already people there and just get in a game. Like Yeah. Versus and, like how it was and, when you were younger and the crew was around and the legendary what's it called? Castleberry Castleberry House? Yeah. Yeah. What was it called? Is it Castleberry? Yeah, yeah seventy one North. <laughs> seventy one North Castleberry. Yep. Yeah. But um Yeah, so just it's it's a convenience thing really yeah. i like i still i still have the urge and i mean i'll still go ride around or go to a skate park every now and then but um it, yeah it's just it's not the convenient same to go to the gym is your kid into yeah. it how old is your son now uh, he he'll into? be 10 in march is he getting into he, anything interested in gaming shit? this is this oh, is oh yeah his, gaming this is his computer yeah. Okay. Yeah. But um uh so he's always been riding with me. He's always since he was like two, he's had a uh what are they called? Um Strider the, bikes. The bikes without the pedals. Strider, yeah. yeah. He's always had yeah. a strider, he's always been riding with me. He's like he was on me or he was with me going on riding trip. Well, not out of town, but local riding trips. Like filming for the X Games video and stuff. Like, That's dope. there's a video where I'm like, I died on like a 17 stair and I'm just laying at the bottom. And he just runs up to me, like, 
and you could just see him like checking out my knee and stuff. It's like, <laughs> so he's always <laughs> seen me. He's always seen me. He's seen you in he's action. He's always seen me riding. He's always seen me fall. Yeah. yeah. And he's always seen me fall and be hurt. And I think that kind of, uh, uh, did, did, what's the word? De- That's hurt him. Deetered, not deetered. Deetered. That's hurt him from. <laughs> deetered him. Yeah. <laughs> deetered him <laughs> from really getting into it. And I remember when he was five years old, because I would take him to the racetrack. He, he learned how to go around to go in the big roll in at the racetrack and go around the track and everything. But I remember when he was like five years old, he was like, that's your thing, dad. That's not my thing. I'm just nice. like, all right, well, I can't, I'm, I can't keep pushing it on you if, if it's yeah. not your thing. But if you want him to do something, tell him not time, to do it. Yeah. Right. But, I, but at the same time, he still enjoys just going cruising with me. Like that's what we'll up. just go downtown just to, just to cruise like yeah but he's not into like learning how to do tricks yeah did but he ever knows? did he ever try learning he, tricks he, like bunny hop or 180 no <laughs> no no but who knows i guess he's 10 years old i couldn't bunny old. hop or 180 yeah wait until he's 16 yeah, i mean see. there's kids yeah there's kids these days that can and but they must have True. a crazy drive for it you know yeah they're like this one but, that you know that japanese kid that's like 11 years old and oh yeah uh sosuke i think is his name i like i wonder what his life yeah. is like it, is, is it is this all him oh. or is it his parents like you, s- you will learn right this. no like you saw that you saw that you saw that video of him going over like a eight foot spine yes yeah like the spine's like double his size and he's, like, yeah. going over it. <laughs> he's amazing but um he's he's into baseball uh and basketball but now Don't. he's starting to get out of it because for gaming he said it's like repetitive. It's the same thing. No, because oh. I told him I was like I, I told him I was like I support. I I always support whatever you love to do, but if it's sitting inside on a computer, you still have to be into something active. I'm not. You're not getting away with not being active. Like yeah, you. Facts. That's got to be a part of your life. Just yep. choose what it is that's active that you like to do. Like yeah. in the off season of baseball, I'd still I'd still want to take him out and like just do some practice, just me and him. That's sick. And he'd be like, I don't want to, I don't want to do baseball anymore. And I'm like, Do you not want to do baseball, or do you not want to go outside and be active right now? You just want to sit inside. <laughs> and he's like, No, I just because I was like, You have to do something active. You can't. You're not gonna get away with not learning an active skill. Yeah. He's like, it's just I don't want to do baseball. I, he's like, I, I'll get into like gymnastics or karate or something. I'm like, okay, well then we'll sign you up for that. Sick. Recently, he, recently he really got in. He's really got into uh, One Piece, the anime. Yeah. And it's made him, it's made him want to be a swordsman. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> he, said he wants to be a swordsman. <laughs> That's and cool. And I was like, well, I was like, well, if you want to learn to be a swordsman, you can't. You don't just start with swords you have to become a black belt through karate first yeah so that's that's the next that's the next journey that's dope that's good that, for him martial arts i think yeah. will teach him a lot yeah. for sure um yeah i i just i've always i've always tried to instill in him uh balance with everything yeah like if you're on a video game for an hour you got to go outside and do something for an hour like yeah Dude, it's so easy. I would do it myself as a, a fucking adult. I'll play five hours of video games, and then I'm like, "What happened? What? What did I do? Yeah. What did I just do?" And it doesn't feel good after. Yeah, but I. Yeah, but at the same time, I, I support him wanting to do that because he could make like these days. You can make money doing that. Yeah, for and real. If that's what you want to do, cool. If you, if that's what you want to do, and that's what you're passionate about, I'm all for supporting you with it, but you got to come up with a plan on how you're going to make it work yeah. for you. Yeah. And for real. you still have to have something that you're active in. Yeah. Like uh, a good role model for like a streamer who's also fit is Nick Merckx. I don't, you know who Nick Merckx is? Uh, I was, yeah, I was just thinking about that. He's, yeah. he's a good, he's, good example. Uh, just work out. Yeah. He's juiced up. 
fucking so like he like yeah. works out and then plays video games all day and it's like that's a good balance and he's making millions of dollars it's fire yeah <laughs> dude i can't imagine the like pressure it's, of it's not being a dad and trying to shape what your kid is into you know like not or like not even yeah trying to shape what he's into it's... but trying to guide him and support him and then if he's like dad i don't want to do baseball yeah. like how does that conversation go you know it's like whew. So that's that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, I'm like, and I don't want him to for I don't want to force him to do nothing he don't want to do. Yeah. But at the same time, at the same time, he, like I say, he's in triple A right now, and it's like, uh, what is it? It's eight, nine, and ten. Eight, nine, ten year olds. Okay. And he was in it when he was eight, and he was in it when he was nine. I was like, bro, you went through all those. You went through. Uh, two seasons of fall ball, two seasons of spring ball till like you were grinding and learning. Like that's not the funnest time when you're not the best, you know, I was yeah. like, you're in your senior year, your third year. Now that you're about to be 10, it's going to be your third year in triple a, you're going to be like on the top of the team now. And now yeah. you're saying you don't want to play like for real. So I'm trying to tell him, like, I'm trying to tell him at least do the, your last season. Yeah. And then he can quit. You know? Yeah. And who knows? He might change and his then, mind and enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. And then <clears throat> I was actually really proud of him the other day because I was talking about it with, with my mom. And she was like, well, you know how kids are. They say they don't want to do something. But as soon as they're doing it and they're with their friends, they love it. Yeah. So so she was like, she was like, have him do it. And then if he's still not into it, then he can just quit. So. I the next time I saw him, I was like, yeah, I was talking to Mimi about it, and she said, you know, kids, you know what I just said, and I was like, and then he was like, yeah, but I don't want to quit on my friends. If I started, I I'm not gonna quit and leave my friends. And I was like, wow, I, good answer, good answer. Yeah, was like, for what, real. Was that a test? <laughs> he was like, what was that a test? And I was like, no, but I'm proud of you for that being your answer. Like, yeah you know they call me shit. if you're starting something you gotta finish it yeah so speaking of like not bailing on friends who are you still in touch with from band and is there a band six seven is there a band six no five just five right yeah is that is that um, the end of is that the end of band and um who who do you uh, who do you ride with when you do red uh man honestly i I, don't, I haven't rode with anyone in band for a while well except for like kyle and um me and tom still talk but we haven't rode together in a while but yeah i don't know band band um after band five it was kind of like well even during filming for band five it's like everyone kind of went their own ways ricky really was like the glue yeah to band like he's he's the one that had that you know initiated everything had everyone yeah. get together and ride and um yeah it's everyone's kind of doing their own thing now yep dude that's so important but, uh, i feel like i'm supposed I, to be I that tried, guy i tr- for my shit, I feel like I'm supposed to be the glue, and I've been blowing it. I yeah. haven't been, I haven't been riding in months. I haven't gone out with the boy. I go out like once at every other Sunday or something, but it's I haven't been, I haven't been the glue as yeah. much as I used to be. What were you saying? Yeah, I, I kind of, I kind of blew it too, but my intentions were there. Um, so after band five, well, get getting band five was so hard, like. Yeah, it took to six, seven years together to film and to get. Yeah, well, it took like five, five okay. or six years. But um, so, yeah, I, after. Oh, the funny thing about Band 5, too, is we were premiering it at um, the first Swamp Fest. Oh, and shit. shout out to Daryl. Shout out to Daryl Taco because he helped me get it DVD ready. Like mm-hmm. I had the whole. It's like a 45 minute it's like a 45 minute video i had it the whole timeline ready but i didn't know how to compress it and 
still yeah. have full quality and have it DVD ready. Yeah. So that's um, a whole other thing. Yeah. So I sent I sent it all ready in its big long project. Sent it to Daryl, and he sent it back to me DVD ready. Sick. And the night before the night before Swamp Fest, I was up burning copies like back to back to back to back. I I started to I had to be up all night doing it, so I would burn one and I'd be like, okay, that took ten minutes. Let me set an alarm on my phone for ten minutes. <laughs> So Sounds like torture. I, I, I take a ten, take take a ten minute nap, wake up. Okay, next one's ready. Uh, so I had fifty copies ready for Swamp Fest. Dude, that's a legit torture also, tactic that they use on prisoners of war. <laughs> Sleep deprivation, like every wake them up every yeah. five minutes. That's fucked. <laughs> that's dedication, yeah. mate. Yeah. Well, it's a big deal. There's a long like. Yeah. So back to. Yeah back to yeah well well you know the even when band five i mean yeah even when band five is done dvd is already you know on its way out yeah but when you're at an event you know it's good it's that's where it, that's when everyone's there to buy a physical copy so i was like i gotta have this for yeah it's for gotta real. be ready for band five and just like i could we we would have we would have still had the premiere but it was just a matter of i it would be really beneficial to have as many copies as I can to sell right now. Yeah. You know um, what I mean, yeah, it's a tough one. I I've done it twice and I already forget how to do it. <laughs> like when it comes time to do it again, I'm going to be like, uh, help. I need to talk to somebody and figure out how to DVD author and get it. Yeah. Daryl. Daryl saved my life with that. Like it was a good thing that we got connected for the X games thing. And, um, is that really how you guys became really friends is the x games thing you guys weren't homies beforehand how did you first meet daryl uh first first it was the monster ramp video okay i got you um, that was the first project first time Fud meeting yeah yeah fudger and daryl came yeah. to florida and did the they put on the video and but the back, best okay, clip so ever is the to, front flip into the lake. My mom freaked the fuck out. I showed it to her <laughs> last night. She's like, he, and he's not wearing a helmet. <laughs> Yo, I I hit the water so hard on my back on that it cut my back. The I believe it. It looks so back. gnarly, dude. Yeah. Yeah. But back back to back to uh band and the future of band. Um what happened after band five? You know, kind of trickled out, and um, and then eventually I had a friend come to me, and he was like, "Hey, I have all this money from doing something." Uh, he had a lot of he he had a lot of money. He have I have a lot and of capital. I'm ready to invest. To so yeah, and he he came <laughs> to me like so enthusiastic about it. He had like all these ideas of what he wanted to do. He's so en enthusiastic about it. And at the time that band LLC was expired. So I was like, okay, give me like, basically like get, pay, pay for the uh, LLC and you can become the finance side of band. I'll still run it. I'll still be like the manager and run it, and, you know, keep the same band vibe that band always has been. But you know, it comes to a time when you got to recruit new people. Yeah. And everyone in band was like, was so set on their ways. I don't think they wanted to have a new face of band. They wanted it to be what it was. I think they would have rather it die out than to get a facelift. Yeah. And um, so I think one of the, the, the first recruit that I had that I suggested was Josh De La Rosa. Oh yeah, kids and, um, killing it. He's from, yeah, he's from Florida, and um, so and he he was also really enthusiastic. He really wanted to be a part of band. Yeah, he lives and breathes bone and, death um, and so, band and that whole vibe. Yeah, so I gave him I gave him access to the band Instagram, and like the first post he did, the caption was like band is under new management blah 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 blah, blah. Oh. and i was like oh my like bro no. <laughs> like, 
we <laughs> we Young have mistake. new finances, but yeah. yeah, like that, and that freaked everyone. That freaked out all the OG crew members. Like, what the fuck? Like, what is this? Like, yeah, and it was hard. It was hard for them to accept that. Like they thought, they thought like I sold, I sold band and like gave it away to somebody that they don't even know. Yeah. But it wasn't like that. I was still in control of everything, but there was a person with money that wanted to invest. Because up to that point, everything banned was my own money from my own job. Yeah. Right? And it was, and doing it that way is just very stressful. And I was like, wow, this would take a. Uh, this would lift so much stress off of me and I could focus more on the creative side than being in charge of finances. What's an example of something that you do so, on the yeah, creative that side? Kinda, uh, like, you know, like just designs and Instagram posts and video. Are you guys partnered with Sparkies to sell shit still? You guys were uh, at one point, right? Not anymore. Yeah, but you were, that, yeah, that kind of faded out. Is it all? Yeah. Do you do you still have I, a shop and people can go buy band shit and you who's shipping it out? Are you shipping it out? No, we don't. We don't have nothing right now. No, I story. have like a handful of but bud saws left. <laughs> I would love to remake some bud saws one day, and it'd be like a nostalgic item for people to. Because I still get asked for bud saws. I'm like, I don't have any right now. I only have my few personal ones. What is a what is this bud saw? But, buzz saw? Yeah. Bud saw. Bud saw. What what does that mean? I've never heard of the band Bud Saw. Oh, sick. You never seen this sprocket? Yes, I've seen that sprocket. I didn't know it was called the Bud Saw. That's cool. <laughs> that's the uh that's the Pat King signature product. Yeah, that's fire. He came up with that, and he came up the, with that. Uh, I think before Ban was under Sparky's, and that was probably like one of our. We we originally, I think the first Bud Saw was maybe made by Phil Wasson, I think. Okay. And um, but and then after. So Band became like a legit company after Band 3 when we were nominated for uh video of the year. Yeah. At, for Nora. Yeah. And my part and my part was nominated for part of the year, which was crazy because we were just a crew, we weren't a company, and here we are nominated against the Levi video and the Nike video. And you just got it's you like, just turned 21 and then you woke up in the yeah. landscape of the front of the hotel in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hell of a yeah. night, dude. I that miss was, those Nora that was Cup an nights. Experience for sure. Now they're all overseas, yeah. man. It, well, this, at least for the past couple of years, it's been overseas. But my, I remember Nora Cups fondly too. That's that is dope to get an independent video to go up against a like corporate funded oh. video. It feels so good. Oh, so so let me let me finish the like where band is. Yeah. So what ended up happening with my friend, the investor, <laughs> he ended up getting raided. <laughs> he got raided. Like oh, the, the, his whole his whole thing, his whole enthusiast, enthusiasm with me was, I got this money. I want to put it in a van, into band, you know, clean my money, you know, like yep. in a legit business, yep. you know, and because he was he was getting worried about what actually ended up happening and it's like damn it just happened a, a tad too late and uh so yeah he ended up having to use that all that money on like court fees and all that stuff to get all of that out of all that and not only that but i f i feel like he didn't feel accepted by the rest of the crew because of the whole they everyone in everyone else in band like freaked out about the decision i made and they didn't they didn't understand. They didn't see the vision that I saw. And it really bummed me out. Like, it honestly really bummed me out because my friend that was printing all our stuff, he, like, he he just really laid it on me. He was like, you did a horrible job running band. Uh, that last design you did was so stupid. 
And I'm like, bro, how are you, how are you printing my stuff? And you're all excited in the moment. Like, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Let's do it. But now you're saying my, my design sucked. Like, yeah, that's whack. That's fucked up. And, and it really hurt that he said, I didn't do a good job running band because I felt like I put my fuck my whole life in the band. Like, yeah. Like uh, I, like you are when, banned. when Ricky passed, yeah, when, when, when Ricky passed and Ricky's dad was like, I want you guys to keep going. Who should, but there's gotta be someone in charge who should be in charge. I felt like I should be because I was like Ricky's right hand man the whole time. Um, I had this, I had the second camera, um, and, and he stole stole I your camera and film. filled your camera bag with also. rocks for the first second band yeah, video. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that shit, yeah. so funny. Tell that story real quick. <laughs> so, before band was a company, and we were still just uh, filming, you know, just for fun. Like, well, I mean, we always just filmed for fun. But before it was like we have a project we need to finish, and we were like, so we. Me and a couple other people were leaving Pittsburgh early. Ricky was staying. He was like, hey, let me let me borrow your camera. And my camera at the time was my baby. And I was like, no, man, this it's coming with me. And uh, so we leave Pittsburgh. We're probably like through Maryland, probably entering like West Virginia or whatever. And my friend goes, hey, get your camera out. Let's Let's watch some of the footage. I'm like, all right, pull the camera bag out open it and it's rocks <laughs> <laughs> like ricky <laughs> bro hilarious but it ended up you know getting the video done so you turned know, out he knew what he was doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah. stealing in the name of band that's pretty punk rock literally yeah. punk and rocks that's funny as fuck <laughs> yeah all right is there anything more with band like finishing up that like the future of it if there is yeah uh well like back to me like feeling hurt about what my friend said like so when ricky's dad told me he wanted me to be in charge i felt i honestly felt the most qualified because i had a bmx career i had the camera i had a vehicle that we could use for trips like and um yeah and where am i going with this um yeah and then even and then when we uh when i made it instagram i never had a personal instagram i just made when like instagram first came out i never had a personal instagram i just made a band instagram and i would just post everything on band in there and then i remember hearing through people that are like oh colt only posts himself on the band instagram I'm like well send me something to post i can't just keep sending throwbacks of you guys like send send me some something you're doing or meet up with me and ride and that's where i say ricky was like the glue because ricky was more forceful of getting you're, people you're to come coming, ride with yeah. him yeah i was i guess i wasn't really that forceful it was like you like you coming or not wasn't i wasn't really like forcing people to come you know yeah so that's where i say ricky was the glue but yeah man and before ricky passed he had ramps him and gary were making ramps at his house and but he wanted to move i think he wa he was saying he wanted to move maybe like atlanta or something he wanted to he wanted to switch up the scene he was like and i me at the time i was um I was, uh, I was after band four ended and then we did a bunch of mixtapes. I wasn't there as much for the mixtapes after band four because I was working. I needed to get my income up to, um, to get a good, like to show, to get approved for a mortgage. Cause I was trying to get a house. Yeah. And, um, so, um, so he was like, Hey, when I move and you get your house, you got to take these ramps and, and keep the band ramps going. So I was like, okay. And all the way up till he passed away. 
Oh, I ended up finding a house for a short sale. Like at the time I was only working for $12 an hour for my dad. Yeah. I only got approved for a for, for a $45,000 mortgage. <laughs> and I ended up I I ended up finding a house, a three bed three bed two bath um for 60k that was a short sale. Nice. And I gave I gave them my $45,000 offer and I told and I and I got approved for it. And I told Ricky, all right, I, I just got approved for this house. I'm gonna get this house. But because it was a short sale, it took like months. It took months for it to go through. And I just remember Ricky being like, You get that house yet? Like, what are you doing? Get like you said you got that house. Why why aren't you in there yet? I'm like, it's I don't know, it's just taking a long time, man. Like, I didn't know why. I just knew it was taking a long time. So it wasn't until he passed away that I finally got the house. Ah, fuck. And that's probably like the first, yeah, that's like the first thing I did was went to his place and picked up the ramps and I continued the uh, ramps at my house. Um, Man, so that's got to be hard. A lot like right after it happened to go and pick up yeah, the ramps. It, yeah. And I kind of like kept the same configuration of ramp setup that he had. Yeah. And then. I finished it out with um, a bunch of wood that I'd get from Halloween Horror Nights because that's my job with my dad's company is building the haunted houses. And then when Halloween is over, you literally just tear it all down and put it in dumpsters. So, so I would tear yeah, it perfect. down. I would just I would just stack stacks of plywood to the yeah. side. Hell yeah. And, take, and then take it home. Boom. So yeah, but then you know it's it's Florida. It rains, wood rots. Yeah, I'd say the band ramps. The band ramps lasted uh, probably like four or five years, which is pretty good considering the weather and shit. Like I know Trey is always yeah. working on his backyard ramps. Like it never ends, and it's because of the well, the weather Trey's, and all that. Trey doesn't have Trey doesn't have any tree coverage, so when it rains and the sun comes back out, it dries up quick. I had oh. a lot of tree coverage in the area I lived. So when stuff would get damp, it would stay damp and it would rot faster. Huh. I wonder if I went there when I lived in Orlando to the band ramps. I like have weird, weird memory flashback of like there's some sort of mini ramp and then a trampoline and something with the roof. Very Florida fucking shit. But I, I don't uh, know. I don't know whose house was I was. That when, was that on? Was that when Mark Mulville was on uh, Sabrosa? Maybe, yeah, because cause like my first trip out there was when I had a Mark was there. Because we had a surprise birthday party for Mark at my house, and, and it was a backyard uh, shenan sure. bonanza. Yeah, and I I remember sure was there. So yeah, maybe you were there. I might have been there. But it's all the a fucking blur, but that's cool. The ramp, yeah, the ramps weren't done at the time, so they weren't completely rideable. But it was it was a tight setup, like. It's one of those setups where like riding the ramp is the trick. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think, yeah, I think I was there, dude. That's awesome. That's cool. I've been to the band house. Oh, hell yeah. You were, you were at my house. <laughs> <Hell> yeah. <laughs> That's wild. It's so crazy how everything becomes a blur. We were talking before we did this podcast about how we can't, neither of us can remember shit. <laughs> but we yeah. were talking about Daryl. I want to keep talk to you about meeting Daryl and getting to work with him. And like, what was it like filming that? monster ramp two video and uh and then what was it like for the x Games shit i mean that's almost a long time ago now you did it two years in a row the x games yeah so 2016 and 2017 pretty legendary shit it feels like yesterday it doesn't feel like five six, i know man i was years just ago. i know I, I was just thinking that today i was like 2016 okay that's four years from 2020 damn now it's 2023 yeah like seven it's years, weird though. covid was I'm, like a time I'm, suck that's I'm what it is be like i'm gonna be like one of those uncle rico's yeah. you like, know yeah, in my back, back in my, in my day, day you know, <laughs> i used to throw a football over that mountain I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna hold on to that 2016 accomplishment my whole life you're gonna walk past because, the, bro, a building that you jumped off of and I, I, like, you see that sign up there i done dropped in on it on my bicycle <laughs> Grandpa, shut the fuck yeah. up! <laughs> no, you did it, yeah, Uncle Rico. Was, 
Bro, the Monster Project was so awesome. Like, um, yeah, well, that was Fudger and Daryl. They came to Florida, and it was with me and Trey. And that's, like, right up our alley. Me and Trey's alley is, like, adding things to street setups. Like, yeah, it was so much fun. Um, and then, And then because we did that video and there was so much, like, it got such a good feedback. Uh, I don't remember at the time how much time it was in between the monster com- video coming out, but I remember I was at work pogoing. I just got all- out of a show, and I'm going back to like the locker room. And I grab my phone, and it's a text message from Stu Johnson, like telling me about this whole thing. And I was just like, "Oh my god, what? No way! This is insane." And he and uh, his message was like, I figured since you just did that monster video with Daryl that he, he would be a good choice for your filmer. I'm like, yeah, I mean, he's the most legit filmer I know. I don't know any other legit filmers. So. Yeah, and he's one of the best. It's crazy. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you guys killed yeah. it. My favorite opening clip is you eating shit with the Trans Am burning rubber right in front of it. It's, that's money. Yeah, man. That was like the... F- so we you have a three-month filming period for those... Uh, 90 second videos yeah and that was the first thing i filmed and yeah, you're I like we're off to a good ankle. start i'm just like oh my god like, <laughs> yeah like but like i said earlier i'm wolverine and somehow basically i took like that first month off to let the foot heal and then continued filming for the last two months but you know when you have an injury like that and you still have to finish a project you just always have that it it puts that like ec- that little bit of doubt in your head after like oh I, I don't know I gotta play it safe here yeah for real like my my ender my my ender in the 2017 where I like di- jumped off the roof into the handicap branding landing yep like I wish I would have done it to the grind to grind on the rail of the uh, handicap landing yeah like if I was if I wasn't in that that like mindset of recovering from an injury then i probably would have went for that instead that is so baffling because it's like either, either one of those if i was in the mindset of recovering from an injury i'm not getting up on a fucking roof dude <laughs> but you did it <laughs> <laughs> man um so yeah so I'd, from those two what clip are you most proud of out of those two x games like what what's the most memorable moment out of working on uh, two? real street parts it's 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 got to be the it's got to be the feeble um it's got to be the feeble off that roof where i had to like tie my bike on a hose to pull it up to the roof nice the ender yes. in the 2016 yeah. yeah where it's just feeble death drop right or is it feeble in, all in the fact, way down i forget does did, yeah. did it go all the way down yeah. The ledge. Uh, what do you mean all the way? So down? like you you ride down this roof the and then the feeble. Ledge, the the end the end the end of the ledge was probably like head height. It oh yes yes yes. Okay story. yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. The no no doubt da- no doubtably that was my favorite clip because let me just one second dead air for a second. I did this. I made this. Ah, uh, yeah. There it is. That's 2016. This is... Yeah. Did you say it's 2016 or 2007? Oh, yeah. Here it is. Here it is for yeah, it was the viewers the... at home. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. wild. That's fucking sick. You made that. Keep it up. What is it? A little shadow box with the metal in the picture? Yeah. That's fire. Funny story about the metal. You want to hear a funny story about the metal? I sure do. Um, uh, Taj was in maybe second grade. Did you and... name him after Taj? Like BMX Taj? <laughs> Kinda, yeah. Nice. I All wanted right. him to... So I wanted him to have the same initials as me, but not the same exact name as me. Because yeah. my initials is TCF. 
My first name's Timothy. Okay. And my dad's name, my dad's name is Timothy. So I've always gone by Colt my whole life because my dad's Tim. So right. And yeah, same, and you, you don't want to be Timmy Jr. Thing with, yeah, same thing with them. They named me Timothy Colton Fake and called me Colt because they didn't like how Colton Timothy sounded. Timothy Colton Fake just sounded better. Yeah, and like he's rolls off Timothy the tongue better. The second, you know? but he go by my middle name. I had no clue, yeah. dude. I thought your first also, name was Colt and your last name was Fake, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my mom really liked the name Blake but she didn't want to do that to me. <laughs> name me, name me Blake fake. Oh yeah, shit. Blake fake. Me. Yeah. We can't, we can't rhyme that fake Blake. And, right, anyways, you were saying Taj is two. I, they, well, hold on. <laughs> then they also named me Colt because after a stunt man named Colt Seaver. And what are the odds? He became a fucking stunt man. And <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, Damn, we got like so many branches going on. <laughs> what, what, so where, you where said you want to hear a funny story about this real? about the silver medal and Taj's too? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, when he was in uh, pre-K, one of the directors from his pre-K went on to be a director at his elementary school. So when he was in second grade, and they had career day she reached out to me and was like, Hey, do you want to come do career day and bring your bike for the kids? And I was like, yeah, sure. So I brought my, brought my bike, brought my medal and like, just talked about my biking. And basically my, basically my point was like, whatever, whatever it is you like to do, if you work hard enough, you could be successful with it, you know, just like something like that. And one of the, and I let them, (laughs) I didn't let them pass my medal around like hand to hand, but a kid went, I don't know why this kid went, I had the medal in my helmet and my helmet was on my handlebar and the kid went to like get get it for me or something. And the medal fell out of the helmet and broke. It's glass. Like it's supposed to look like it's a, a camera lens, you know? Yeah. And it broke. And Oh, dude, I was devastated, but I held it together. But and then when I left the school, I cried, bro. I, cried. <laughs> oh, like, I was devastated. But it looks but like you got I a replacement. To, yeah, I reached out to Stu, and uh, I think it was Brian Tunney. Is that how you say his last name? Brian yep. Tunney. Yeah. I think it was him that that got got the medals done, and he he uh. He reached out to whatever company made them and he got me one. I originally thought I was going to have to pay for it, but they just sent it to me. I was Fuck so yeah. thankful for that. So yeah, now that's... I have now I have two medals. I, ha- I have a, a ring with nothing in it. <laughs> and I have a solid one. That's a dope like uh, metal. I didn't realize it was shaped like a camera lens. That's cool. Very, very cool. So yeah. the, the, the roof, tell me the story of the roof people. You have to... What do you mean you have to use a hose to get the bike on the roof? Uh, dude, I feel so bad. I don't remember the guy's name, but uh, one of Daryl's friends in that area, like the Jersey area, was like, hey, I know this. There's this crazy down ledge off of a building. Might be up your alley. Let's go check it out. So we went and checked it out. And um, I could get it's really steep and I could get up it by like walking feet and hands up it, but I couldn't hold a bike and walk up. it. I literally needed all four to get up it. Yeah. So what, so what I did, what there was a hose nearby. So I tied the hose around my waist, climbed up the building and then the other end of the hose, they tied my bike to, and then I could just pull it up. Yeah. The bike up. Was that yeah. first, first try or what? The Phoebes. No, I think, I think two times the, it was only like, you only really had to hop a couple inches, but somehow on the first try, I missed my peg. Oh no. And somehow, somehow came out unscathed. That's so and fucking I think crazy. Like the second time. Yeah. And then second time, I think I slipped <laughs> a foot. 
And then I think it was third try. Shit, dude. I cannot. I'm, fucking A. That's that's wild shit. What do you, what goes through your brain when you're about to do something like that? Because like this is toward because I know that. All right. So in a previous interview you did, you talked about how like you were just like, fuck it. And you, you were angry, depressed, whatever. And you would just like, I don't care if I get hurt. I'm going to try this shit. But then as you get yeah. older, now you're doing this X Games part. You've set the level so now high for sign. yourself. Yeah. And you have some other shit that you got to like think about. So what what's your mindset when you yeah. were doing that feeble? Um. So I was listening to the to the the Dak interview you had, and I, I was that was really interesting his mindset of when he's gonna do something, um, because yes, yes, you you have to think about those negative things so that you can avoid them, but you don't want to get hung up on them. Yeah, you don't want them. To, so, like I've I've always just said, I just just try and turn it off. Yeah, like that's. I feel like that's my mindset is you just got to turn it all off for real and just think about the, and just think about the mechanics of what you got to do. That's pushing the button. But, but at the same time, yeah. But at the same time, you do have to keep in mind the bad things so that you know how to avoid them. Yeah. I think, And I think that's why you always get the worst injuries when you're doing the dumbest thing, because you're not being mindful. That's true. That. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dude, and just, I, I mean, I spent an hour before this watching all of your parts, and you have so many fucking slams. And then I also know that from a previous interview that you haven't had serious injuries. Like, you're just getting, you know, you get rocked a little bit, but then you're fine in a couple of days or a week or two and shit like that. That's so crazy. Yeah. And your worst injury, I'm trying to remember, something with your knee or no? What's the worst injury you've had from uh, all these years of sending it, dude? You're a fucking hog. To con concussions, <laughs> <laughs> concussions, and uh, I I think the closest I came to breaking something was my scapula. There was a curve wall ride, but it had a curb in front of it, and the only piece of wood I could find for the curb was really skinny. So I was hauling ass at this skinny piece of wood to get in a curve wall ride, missed it, and then just shoulder check the curve oh, all right no and then <laughs> scapula is this and then, this guy and then right had here? to sit three it's, it's like, like no shoulder blade it's like in the back oh, okay gotcha it's in the back it's back here all right and uh and then had to sit then had to sit like three maybe four deep in the front seat of a monte carlo <laughs> for 30 minutes to drive to drive home like, <laughs> like just, squished with a freaking just cracked in, scapula. in agony yikes <clears throat> and then i i would say i would say knees are my biggest fear injury because i know so many people that you know they they've had knee injuries and then it hasn't been the same since yeah dude and nick, nick bonnell out that here my, my worst knee injury was on a motorcycle that is true, yeah. Yeah, you, you this whole all this BMX career and then you only you get hurt just going to get paper towels. It's fucking nuts. Um but yeah, on the knee injury yeah. front, like I've never seen anything like Nick Bonnell. He's from out here. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's on Animal and Fit and Street Dog and he's torn his ACL and MCL four time four separate times in the past like eight years and just heals up and then goes right back to it and he's back he's like better than ever it's unbelievable like if it if the first one happens to me i'm like i'm gonna find a different hobby you know <laughs> like start working out or some shit but yeah i mean like one one of my one of my biggest idols is mike escamilla and you know he's he's talked about his list of injuries before it's like oh my god yeah you gotta really love it he's still out there killing it too yeah yeah it's fucking wild and it's so <clears throat> i i look at it i'm always trying to look at the positives in things and i feel like i've never had i feel like i've never been like on like a bmx team it's always been like a crew like like band is like a crew bone right. death is kind of like a crew i haven't been on like you know like a, a corporate team or anything but a part of me is like well maybe that was on purpose because what if i was going on more trips 
and going harder like yeah and trying to do cult fake shit i'd be dead by now (laughs) yeah for real yeah (laughs) like i i think maybe while you're filming for a band and it's it's like low pressure just out with your friends type shit it's maybe that like lowers the risk of getting hurt because you're relaxed if i don't know if you're fucking relaxed while you're doing a rail hop to manual on a slightly curved wall you know what i mean like that's just one clip that stuck out of all the shit that you've done it's so fucked to think about what like i guess so outside of your x games parts what's your most memorable clip banger in band three the feeble to wall ride that impossible feeble to wall ride or Mm, i think the i think the opener for band three uh the the it's the stair set under the georgia dome um yeah wall ride yeah it's like the gap out to the yeah wall. gap out to like kind of running like, direct kind of bug splat into a wall. yeah that yeah. shit's crazy yeah um f- that was one of those situations where your first try is your closest and then it's downhill from there yeah and and, How, I, and then I using the hit. blood for the intro was that real blood yeah no, that was just like okay. die. Nice. I did All that right. in I did that in my garage. But then, the way it's timed after that clip, it made me think it was real. I was like, he must have been bleeding yeah. a shitload. But then like all the dump comes in, I'm like, damn, he's really bleeding. <laughs> like with you, yeah. I, I could picture you spelling out your name like a, on a real injury blood, but the bucket of blood yeah. afterwards is like, all right. <laughs> yeah, I, I I split my head on that. We went to the uh, we went to the hospital in Atlanta, and of course it was like. We were there all night in the ER waiting. I had I had to get some staples. But what was crazy is while we were in the ER waiting and the news is on, they're talking about how some actress fell on the bunny slopes, like skiing. She fell on the bunny slopes and hit her head, and she died because of head bleeding or whatever. And I'm like, damn, I that was on the bunny slopes, and I just hit my... I just slammed my head and I have to sit here and wait for hours. <laughs> yeah. That is trippy so, to think about. Fuck. Because like yeah. we are fragile like human beings, you know, and the like young younger me is like, I don't give a shit. I, I actually I I'm, I was never really a fuck it type writer, but like it's a risk and I'm not wearing a helmet and I'm trying shit. I'm not doing anything really crazy, but it's dangerous, man. Even like the shit that took out Scotty, the shit that took out Mike, like just normal routine shit and you hit your head and then all of a sudden your life's yeah. kind of over and changed it's kind of crazy what are, what what are your thoughts on yeah. helmets uh, uh i'll tell you edwin edwin would be a big fan of you because you're fucking crazy and you don't wear a helmet and that's edwin told me and he's like <laughs> he's like you, this is what you signed up for <laughs> i mean like, i get it i i get it i i get the argument of helmets but like not wearing a helmet it's not just a style choice it's not just for the aesthetics it's more like bro you the wind in your hair like i don't know man if i'm yeah. gonna if it's gonna happen it's gonna happen but I'm oh, with like, you, man. oh but like a, a situation like uh fudger you saw fudger yeah uh, just post that like that that helmet probably really saved him from for real something bad happening so you know you never know you never know when it's gonna happen um no. but i i don't know it, i still believe it it should be a personal choice it's your own body 100 so. percent. that is your own body i just joined the bucket brain bucket gang so next time next clip that i film i'll be wearing a helmet it'll be the first helmet clip of my entire life because i've never found one that fits my big ass head <laughs> i don't know it's just like helmets at skate parks is all good but just like filming a street clip with a helmet i don't know it's just weird because it doesn't have the feel of you're just out cruising you know it has a feel like you're being intentional an athlete yeah you're out there you're out there being an athlete with protective gear what about like any type of pads and shit like shadows you know shin guards and shit you ever fuck with that or you just raw dog everything uh if I want to do, okay, so I, I don't, I don't do bar spins or tail whips because they like, you get hurt 
the most. Those are the two tricks that you get hurt the most. I remember one time I was like, okay, I'm going out front. I'm trying bar spins all day. And if, you know, eventually I'm going to get used to it and it'll be fun. And then like, you know, like 10 tries in and you jam a finger and you're like, oh man, no, (laughs) I don't like, but if I want to do, if I want to do tail whips, I'll throw on some shin shin pads just to save the shins because it's, it's gonna happen yeah i'm gonna yeah it's inevitable that i'm gonna hit a shin there's no way i'm gonna land pedals yeah i i notice that you do gaps with turndowns like that's kind of your trick that you fuck with in the streets it's like wall rides turndowns 360s and then yeah like as far as like straight tricks down gaps i think that's it right 180s yeah what's your favorite trick to do What's the best feeling shit? 360. Yeah, 360s. 360. Yeah, 360. Sure. The one you did at the end of band two. When so good. Oh, the one where I where when I'm where I'm done and I come up. I come to up the to two, the two homies. Dudes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was. That's funny. I was thinking about this clip earlier today because, because I was thinking like, okay, what if he asked me what what are my favorite clips that i filmed and that's probably one of my favorite because that whole interaction was just natural it was that was an organic experience yep. that like that was like yeah we said yeah we said hey he's good like I, I i didn't land it one time and these guys walk up like oh what are y'all doing this is crazy yeah and then ricky's just like <laughs> ricky's like ricky's like hey when he lands it say something to the camera and so i land it and i come up to him and then they're just like, that's the only way. He's like, that's the only place you're going to see it, man. Bam. <laughs> and, then I, and then I dap him up. Like, yep. that was just an organic experience. So I love stuff like that. Another another clip that I really like is, um, I think it's also band two, where there's a little kid. It's fisheye of a 360. And there's a little kid dribbling a basketball in the shot right before I get to the 360. Huh. And that was that was organic too. That was, we didn't tell that kid, hey, dribble the ball right here. It was just like the takeoff for the jump was on a basketball court. Yeah. This little kid's just just playing and just, <laughs> like Did you end up having the banger part of every single band? I didn't watch uh, band, no, band one. Three, band three I had the intro. Oh, okay. I just saw I've only um, seen your section of band three. I gotta watch the whole thing. Who's your like band, band three, and then band four? You got banger band five, banger or no? No band five. It was Ricky. Well, yeah, it was Ricky and Gary. Well, I guess so. The the last like the last part, and then it was like the Ricky and Gary tribute. Yeah, that's such a bummer, dude. It happened here. It like I I just drove on the road that they died on, and so like yeah. It's just fucking scary shit. It's a freak, freak accident type shit. <clears throat> yeah, um, man. I want to talk and about I... Pet or I don't know the. Go- well, let's stay on Ricky and Gary for a second. I just don't want to bum everybody out. But rest in peace, fucking legends. Yeah. What were you gonna yeah. say? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> right. Well, salute to Ricky and Gary. Rest in peace. That's a tragedy. I think the whole BMX world felt it. And it's crazy to think it's been like 12 years since then. Yeah. Time. It was just 11. Yeah. So crazy, dude. Um, yeah. Um, harsh Sep- segue. September, I September want to talk 20th. about September 20th. Is September the, is 20th, the... 2011. I was 21. I had just turned 21. Are we the same age? You're 33? Or turning 33 this year? Um. 34 i'll be 35 this august oh shit you're gonna have a midlife yeah, crisis man. pretty soon get back on that bike and get into another car accident it. yeah <laughs> what's your uh, midlife crisis i already I already have my midlife crisis was so after after i got the silver x games you know uh Stu, like so at, like after after the like the filming the awards of it and everything you know we're just hanging out with everyone's hanging out like as a crew and going wherever they need to go and i remember Stu saying to me like 
he, you know, the, like Stu was really happy for me. And he was like, you got to just keep the ball going, man. Like use this as momentum to keep the ball going. And like, I was really motivated to. So when I got back, I, um, I reached out, well, I reached out to, uh, 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 what, what was it? Um, Hot Pocket? Yeah. I sent an email to Hot Pocket because <laughs> they were a sponsor. Yeah. They were a sponsor for it. So I reached out to Hot Pocket. I reached out to Monster because I did the Monster ramp video. Didn't hear nothing back from both of those. But then I like personally got together with Ronnie because I was like getting flow from Shadow. And I was like, this is this is the perfect time to, you know, talk to him about getting bumped up because and my my whole um, my whole argument of it was, I I took Ricky's place as owner of band. He was also riding. He was getting paid by Shadow and Sputnik, and then running band, and they're all under Sparkies. So my argument to Ronnie was, you know, I'm I'm in Ricky's position now, but I still have to have a nine to five job to to uh live my life i can't i can't put as much time into band as i would like to as if i was yeah writing pro on shadow and i was like i just i just won silver at x games i beat bro i beat well who would i beat in 2016 like van homan and dennis anderson or something <laughs> it's like, pretty crazy it was yeah it was it was unbelievable i beat my freaking my freaking heroes bro yeah and so I thought I had like a valid argument of, hey, I should get the bump up. And I just got told it wasn't in the budget. So at that time, so at that time, I was like, OK, well, I'm not going to just keep being a billboard like I'm going to see what else is out there. So I got with uh, Burns about Eclat and um, they were down, but it was the same thing they just wanted to give me parts they told me that um kind of the same thing wasn't in the budget and i'd have to work my way up to the pro team and um i was like but i just beat one of your pros yeah, in the i've been working games. my way up for 15 years now you know <laughs> like yeah i five, five they, dvd parts they, two x games parts to, <laughs> it's crazy they they wanted to put me on the the am team with and i have an x games medal in my resume so it was just weird and then like they wanted me to build my way up or whatever they wanted me to film like a welcome edit but then they wanted the welcome edit to be all on my own budget and yeah Yikes. i didn't have a filmer for that and i just there was no incentive there wasn't an incentive to go my hardest and i'm not gonna film a half half ass video yeah fuck i'm not gonna put out a half ass video so then the fire kind of dwindled yeah so midlife crisis was around that when i was trying to make deals happen nothing would work and so then i was like well i'm getting i'm not getting any younger what am i gonna do after this i'm always gonna ride i'll i'll ride my bike until i'm like 80 you know because yeah. you can ride you can ride a skate park i told my mom that last like, night i was like i think i'm gonna 180 when i'm 70 like i think it's still i yeah. can still do it you know yeah so i'm always gonna ride for fun but it's like the realization of um the risk versus reward isn't there anymore it's so true, what dude. am i gonna do yeah and um so back to say back to the whole thing of I got my house for 45k in 2012. Um, I lived in it for eight years. I was slowly I was fixing it up that whole time I was living there, and um, that's kind of what got me into real estate was the fact that oh I yeah you're house. in real estate yeah, yeah I was like the, I I got this house for so cheap, and I put work into it. And now I can make a profit off of it. I was like, that'd be sick to just keep doing that. Yeah. And so without really like researching or having knowledge or like researching and building knowledge about it, I was just like, I'm going to go get my real estate license. 
So I did the whole class and it's so funny, the class you got to take for your real estate license, none of that information that you're forced to learn for the test, you really use in real life. Yeah. In real life, it's just like people skills and marketing and yep. connections. Like it wasn't until after I had my real estate license that I learned I didn't need my real estate license <laughs> to flip houses. Yeah, for real. But I, <laughs> Yeah, but, but I'm sure you learned some anyways. shit that that's worth it, you know. Yeah, and yeah, it, I, and, when and you're I doing can, the fixing and flipping, you can get the commission, you know. So that's pretty dope. You can exactly. list it yourself. Yeah, I, I exactly. I, I just keep it and I I renew it every year just to because it's a useful thing to have. Really, it's yeah. it's an investment to keep paying paying to keep it. So, so what's the latest real estate deal so you've that, done? Like, how much did that appreciate from 2012 to 45K to 2020? You sold it? When did you sell it? Yeah, the end of 2020. So which, that's a pretty, that's when the market my, was pretty high, in, right? Yeah. Well, it kept going up after that. Yeah, it did. In my, it, mind, it, I, in my mind, I thought that was going to be like the peak. So I kind of rushed to sell it. If I sat on it for another year, I could have made another like 50K or something. Yeah. But what did it end, what did it end up selling it? I sold it. I got it for forty five. I sold it for one seventy five. Fuck yeah, dude! That's awesome. Yeah, I'm... and so yeah, that that motivated me to keep doing that. And um, right now, um, actually, my dad my dad has a nonprofit called Barakel, and um, he had a skate park for the longest time in his uh shop and his main business would like fund the uh the barrel his nonprofit and um he kind of did the same thing like the market is the highest it is right now so i'm going to sell the building so my dad just sold his building and he made a good amount of money off that too and he wants to find land to expand barrel and make it something bigger Sick. than it was cuz he wants to he wants to retire and slowly, slowly uh, end his main business right? and just, you know, work on the nonprofit more. And I think that's like where I'm, what I'm going to be focusing on too is because like, I, I love kids. Like if there's like when, when Taj has like, you know, the end of the season baseball party, Mm -hmm. and it's all the pan and it's all the kids and all the parents and all the parents are hanging out i'm kind of a young dad so i don't really connect with all those other parents i'll hang out with the kids and like play games with the kids so like nice i feel I, i'm like starting to feel like it that's like my purpose where i'm supposed to go is more with helping kids that's what's up and yeah that's a good midlife crisis sounds like you figured some yeah. shit out <clears throat> yeah it's you know patience having a kid really teaches you a lot of patience yeah and to like obviously you have to work for the things you want and have intention for the things you want but at the same time not force them and let it let let god's plan come to you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, i mean that's valid <laughs> Yeah. You said it weird, but it's valid. <laughs> Let God's yeah. plan come to you. So have you done <laughs> have you purchased any short sales since that one? No, I actually back? like dropped. how did you even do that? In the big like how do you buy a short sale? Bro, I was how old was I? I think I was like twenty four. I don't really rem yeah, that was like ten years ago. I don't really remember the process. Yeah. I just remember, I just remember, um, yeah, I don't know. It was through the, it was through the bank and I, I can't tell you what took so long for it to go through. I think it was right, just yeah. like the bank, the bank not wanting to take 45, but then eventually they had to, cause it was like, it's not going to sit. It's. And that's after, so that's, that's like four years after the big crash, which is crazy to think about. And like, here we are, we're. Like, I don't know if you, yeah, obviously, you know, but it's like, it's, uh, 
and I don't know if it's crashed, but it's corrected. Like everybody's houses aren't selling for what they were just like yeah, it's last kinda, year. It's kind of it's kind of plateaued. I'm still waiting on it to go down a little bit because I don't want to buy I don't want to buy something right now and then fix it up, but then the market went down. So you then you you sell it for this. You put money into it, but only sell it for what you got it for. Yeah. I really drop uh I really dropped the ball when I first sold my house because I was lacking the knowledge. Um I was finding houses that were um like a hundred they were like a hundred K and or like they were around the hundred K area and at the time I thought like if I want to fix and flip this, I have to buy it cash. I, I, but and then I was like, if I buy it cash, I'm not gonna have the money to fix, fix it, flip up. it. Yeah. So like, I was trying to find investors that would pay that and stuff, and I didn't realize I don't have to buy it cash. I could I could still get a mortgage on it. Yeah. And then use my cat, and then use my cash to to fix it up. Yeah. And then um, yeah. It's interesting, but, dude. Um, There's like. I think real estate is my future too, honestly. And I've been around it making content for them for well, seven years yeah, and just learning all the crazy shit. It's so trippy. You, you definitely got the best mentor around, that's for sure. That's wild. It's, I'm so lucky that yeah. I work for these guys. That's kind of part of my yeah, deal man. working for them. I told we have a two-year deal, and at the end of the two years, he's going to kind of push me on my real estate journey. And I'll still be working for him, but I'll be wholesaling houses and buying a house this year at some point to live in or to rent out or I'd like to house hack find somewhere with like a ADU and have somebody rent that out or me live in the ADU and then rent out the main house to cover the mortgage like there's so many things you can do and it's yeah for real the possibilities so are like infinite I, I, I've I've used my I've used my license a, a couple times to you had like, some sellers uh, or buyers both nice but not enough not not enough to where that's i'm still working for my dad basically it's it yeah. not enough to sustain me i call my i call my dad's job like my safety net job because yeah. even during my whole bmx career i was still working for him yeah and um and yeah but my goal is to cuz he's 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 fading out his company so yeah my goal is to you know be reliant on my real estate career and and then you know do the do the uh non-profit on the side as well that sounds like a plan man but right. i gotta yeah, pee but, i'll be right back I'm, hold on all right hey good idea i gotta pee too hey same yep. timing we just sat down at this at the same exact time how cool dude yeah. <laughs> all right so let's go through some questions for cole from instagram cole colt all right did you get any money from the x game silver medal if so how much and what did you use it for i don't think he said this is from juan camilo c juan camilo ci he didn't ask how much. He just said, "If if so, what did you use it for?" But I want to know how much, dude. Give me some numbers. I, I, am numbers. I am I allowed to talk about that? I, I think I think it's public. Whatever. I could probably okay, Google it. So, if you finished, you get five grand to finish your edit. Like everyone got nice. five grand for finishing the edit. That's fantastic. And then I think, I think first place was. I think first place was 20 grand for a writer and filmer to split. And then second was no, 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 no. Second. I don't know what first was second place was 20 grand for writer and filmer to split. So all yeah, together handsome. Yeah. So all together it was 15 K each. Um, Fuck yeah. You and Daryl. Dar Daryl. Yeah. Me and Daryl. That's what's up. What'd you use it for? What did I use it for, man? I used some for band to finish the DVD, um, to to finish filming for it, and to 
you know, get the DVDs made and everything and, um, and some shirts and beanies and, uh, it's kind of crazy because you know how I said I was at work when Stu told me about the opportunity. It was like right after that, that that job ended and went away. Oh shit. So you were just living off it for a minute. It then. Kind of, yeah. I was kind of living with it for a minute. Um, I didn't know nothing about like investing or anything at the time. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan 079 says, just let them know that feeble Smith at the end of band for life is the hardest clip. That's the one <laughs> huge pink wall, and then he landed in rocks. The feeble Smith. Yeah, that shit was nuts, dude. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't. That's no a hard, one knew hard that's what clip. I was gonna. No, ever, ever, like that clip. That clip has a like has a lot of hype in it because everyone went crazy when I landed it because they didn't know that's what I was gonna do. I think I feel. I think I feebled it once, and then I was, I was just like, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it again. And then I didn't tell them I was gonna do the the Smith after it, so that like sup like they real go, like what? surprised them. And, yeah, yeah, that's dope. Yeah, that's a good clip. Ryan 079, shout out to you. <laughs> Tony Maloof, mixed kids. I want one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so, but, so back to did I name Taj after Taj? Um, and I say kind of because I wanted the same initials, but I didn't want them to have the same first name. So I was trying to think of other names that uh, started with a T. And Taj sounded like a good mixed kid name. It's a good mixed kid name. <laughs> and Yeah. And but yeah, then also Taj was an influence to that for sure. Because yeah. Forward's probably like my, one of my favorite videos. Yeah. Is it Forward where Ruben does that uh, crazy wall ride that just got shared around? Trey posted it on his story and it's, he goes up a bank and then wall rides and then lands on the other side of a staircase into another bank legendary I clip think maybe that i think maybe that was the second yeah <laughs> forward grounded i don't know if that was ethnies i don't know yeah, i don't know all right joy of all trades says band six with some really loud question marks and exclamation points but i think we said no right you know what that would be I I'm not gonna say no to it, no, because part happen. of me wants to still do stuff. Yeah, and there's yeah, that's the cool thing about a scene wants, video. Part is of like, me wants to still like you know. Why not? It's kind of like little. It's kind of like little devil, you know. Little devil disappeared for a bit, and then it came back, and everyone was stoked because it came back. I feel like maybe band could do the same thing. Yeah, I'm on that, dude. It's been ten years since Mediocre Best came out. Mediocre Best Two is like. Maybe coming out next year or this year, twenty twenty three. So, so that, that that's takes a while. That's not a that's not out of the question to me. That's that's what's up. Yeah. Cool. So it's, it's possible. not out of the question. You know, still still would try and keep the same vibe, but obviously it would be new writers. Obviously, yeah, dude. Josh, but, you know, Josh could go him, in. Maybe so. Him. Oh, I meant to say after yeah. that incident with the Instagram, you guys still fuck with Josh? Like he did, they didn't fuck anything up. Yeah, you still cool with Josh? De La Rosa. Oh yeah, Josh is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, he's on bone, bone, bone death with me. Yeah. What's it like being on bone death? Like, how often do you talk to it's Sean? It's cool. It's it's kind of just like band. It's the same thing. It's just you know, funded by his own personal money, and it's like crew vibes, really. Yeah. Dope. Uh, we had we haven't we I haven't done a trip since pre COVID. Like I'm really itching to get together with sean again and work on something yeah the, your fast food well, yeah I, I had yeah i had i had uh my first signature frame was the colt 45 and then this and then the second one was the machine and yeah so i'm very thankful for how that. does it work i've always been curious like suppose i get a signature frame i get a percentage of sales is that what it is or no i don't even really worry about that um he would uh he would give me uh royalties on it but you know i wouldn't ask for like the numbers or anything It'd right just be yeah like whatever 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 you want to give me because i i already know he's he puts his own money into keeping things going anyway so i feel like me asking for more money from him is like yeah no asking for money out of his pocket yeah but actually what i did what i did do 
with the uh, when the machine came out, which was a good idea, was I bought a bunch myself at the whole at the wholesale price, like the same price that a bike shop would sell it for. Nice. And then I made a web and then I made a web store and sold them myself. Hell yeah! Good and for you. That was that was a lot better than you know just royalties or whatever. Um, how much is I it? Also did a, uh, Are they still for sale? Uh, I think they're sold out now. Word. Good. Fuck but, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, good. But at the same time, I see that as well. Maybe more should have been made. You know. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit. I feel bit. like I feel like I feel like but I feel like band and bone death were always limited in Sparky's. <laughs> let me first let me first say I want to. Let me first say that. I'm like forever grateful for Ronnie and the opportunities he gave band like after band three became world known. And then he came to Ricky with wanting to, you know, make it more legit, like forever grateful for Ronnie for that. Yep. And, um, but I just feel like because they were companies under Sparky's that weren't owned by him, they weren't, uh, like the main focus, obviously. Yeah. Obviously, they're not going to be the main focus because they're not his companies. Right. But and and it's like a gamble on his part to get more made. Yeah. You know. It's a, everything's a fucking but, gamble in BMX. It's crazy. Yeah. Like he and I'm like it, forever it could, grateful too. It it could it could sell out the first order, and you could be like, okay, well, let's get more made. The second time but and then the hype die out for the second order you right know? yeah so you don't really know yeah i was like i was so hyped because mediocre at best came out and then ronnie was like let's distribute it and this is like the end of dvd distribution but through sparky's mediocre ended up in the hands of kids like all over the world and bike shops and we start getting messages from all around the world kind of like banned a little bit not quite as legendary but yeah fucking, still without ronnie like <clears throat> the world wouldn't have seen as much of it. Okay. Yeah. Y'all, y'all gotta 17 says wildest trick idea for a spot that never saw the light of day. That's an interesting question. Is there yeah. anything like, what's your great white Buffalo? Oh man. Uh, what is it? Oh, I have one that I've always wanted to do and I haven't tried yet. So, you know, okay. Like, so you know how like you want to take something on a big setup, so you practice it on a small setup first. Yeah. I have this I I have this idea that I would want to try into a foam pit, but I don't have a foam pit, so I would try it off of a roof of a boat dock. You know. Yeah. So you're you come up, you're riding towards the end of the boat boat dock, I mean the roof on the boat dock, and you 180 right at the edge and you pull your brakes so that you and then you pull a backflip oh so fuck 180 yeah 180, backflip to fakie 180 yeah 180 to backflip fakie off the roof because <laughs> that 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 one eight that momentum you have from yeah it makes sense hitting your brakes yeah, yeah. The, the momentum you have from hitting your brakes on that 180 you just pull it into the backflip dude so that's that's something I I've always wanted to do, but haven't. And doing it into the water would be the perfect practice. Hey, if anybody is listening and wants to send Colt to Woodward to practice this shit and then get it done, let's go. <laughs> you know, let's crazy. get you funded for this trick. I've never been to Woodward, and the only resi I've ever rode was at Mike Spinner's house. Nice. <laughs> you, you rode Mike Spinner's house in like his heyday yeah. when he's on ballpark and. Like, is he still yeah. living like a fucking king? I feel like he, he was, was living like a king for a while. He was he was in band one and two before he blew up. Nice. Because uh, he's from down where Ricky's from. So where, where <laughs> that's Ricky wild. From. Yeah. What a like yeah. he was a f- f- flash of lightning in the pot. He was the first like. I think he he had a full part in band one. And I think band two and band three, he just had a couple like clips in in uh i'm gonna have to go sports. watch that full band part from mike spinner that's street cred that was when he i think his banger was uh 180 whip on like a three stair or something Sick. but that was like you know when 
that was like new shit. Yeah. Still, 180 whip is crazy to me, but yeah, everything's progressed yeah. to the point where that's like cool Instagram clip, bro. You know, like it's fucking yeah. wild. That's a good question. All right, yeah. let's see. Um, wide, wide, you, wide. All right, reckless. Three one nine. Wide. Did you stop riding as much? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I still ride. Camera, son. <clears throat> I still ride. Well, like we said earlier. I yeah, we covered it. Day. We covered. We answered that question. Dude. I still ride, but um, it's just you don't see me ride. I don't. Yeah. Film. I don't film as much. Yeah, then we covered that. Ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. All right. <coughs> What's your favorite the, pogo trick? Oh, what are you saying? I, I don't want to put out. I don't want to put out. You know, I, I feel like it's like making videos. You always got to top your last shit. I'm not trying to put out a video and go down, back yep. down. Yeah. Favorite pay, favorite pogo chick? Can't go wrong with a Superman. That's pretty cool. That really I, fun. You started doing Supermans on your pogo, and then now you can do Supermans on your bike? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty yeah, rad. Pretty much. Uh, and then there, there's, this trick, there's this trick called the Olbs. It's uh, under the leg bar spin. Huh, the olbs? Um, yeah, olbs, under the leg, bar, bar spin. So you do like, you, you're you holding it, and you take your left grip, go under your leg, and give it to your right one, and then go like that. Oh, shit. That's pretty yeah, wild, that man. Too. What a crazy yeah. sport, and a weird story of how you got into it. Like it so your dad was a yeah, contractor for Disney, awesome. and that was universal. friends with everybody universal and was like yeah and your son rides bmx would he be interested we're looking for pogo riders <laughs> and you you were yeah. like yeah i'll learn how to do that and it paid better than yeah. your you're working for your dad yeah and then even sick. after that ended even after that ended i i hooked up with um with the company that like one of the other guys was with is called it's called x pogo yeah and they do like they do like school tours, you know, kind of like, you know, how BMX does school yep. tours, but it was Pogo. That's dope. And, um, and so like, I think to become part of X Pogo, you, I made a, uh, I made an edit. I made a Pogo edit. Is it online? Learn how to, yeah. Hell yeah. Um, I, what's it called? It's like X, X Pomo, uh, X Pogo, Colt Fake X Pogo audition or nice. something like that i don't know no. not audition but like it's Sponsor like a me tape. tape yeah yeah but um i had to learn a backflip to like be on their crew or whatever so i had to learn backflip and front flips and so the first show i did with them um i was the i was a performer and we'd have to like in gyms we would have to put these mats down I did a backflip, but I traveled so far in the backflip that when I landed, I wasn't on the mat anymore, and it slipped out, and my teeth caught the very end of the mat. I would have knocked my teeth out if I didn't catch that Whew. last bit of the mat. But Bam. yeah, if it, it fucked, it fucked me up. And but what that ended up doing was I became an MC for them instead of a performer. <laughs> nice. They're so like, like, let's have you on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah which was cool because you know i have these credentials now it's like and here's here's your uh and here's your mc x games medalist cult fig you know like I true have a yeah credential now yeah so like yeah that's pretty rad i love that yeah. um the hardest trick to learn on a pogo trick i think you talked about it the front flip front flip is easier than the back flip i would say back backflip backflip scare me more okay because if you if you slip if you don't if you under rotate and slip out on a front flip you kind of just go to your back or your butt which yes that sucks but it's better than going to your face true yeah i've never done a backflip on anything in my life like underwater in a pool i've done a backflip but like never not on even a, on a trampoline not a trampoline no nah. Oh, it was like forbidden so i had a trampoline growing up too and i wanted to learn them but my dad was like you're not doing backflips and i was like okay dad i won't and then i just never did so that feeling is so yeah. foreign front flips though i got you let's go 
Um, dude, I want to talk about that clip. You, I don't know which band it was in, but I took a picture of it because you're just riding along a tall ass bridge, and then you just jump off your bike into the water. Hmm. Another. That bridge. Yeah, I mean, it's the worst picture another, ever. But what the fuck is that? Another, dude? I was banned too. Uh, it's another. It's another Ricky influenced clip. Ricky <laughs> was, you know, heavily influencing all. Ricky's like. <laughs> Ricky is like the the reason I'm the writer I am today because he his just his influence was unreal. It's like you his saw. Persuasion. Tell me the story of that day. Uh, that was in Tampa, and what did we do before that? I think band one, <laughs> like ba- band one, there was like this an over like a bridge that goes over a highway, um, and there was like a pile of unpacked dirt by it, like a construction site. And I don't know, Ricky's just like, somebody should jump off this bridge into that dirt. And my dumb ass was like, yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> and so so I did that in band one. And um, I think I yelled Geronimo. <laughs> 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 like just one of those moments that, you know, it just comes out. You're not even thinking about it. You're just like, Geronimo! <laughs> and so I think. So I think in band two, you know, we're always trying to look for something to one up ourselves, and that was the next idea. Okay. Yeah, if you plant any bridges. bigger, you might fucking die, dude. That was like Jesus Christ. Yeah. So yeah, jump, big. Jump off this bridge that's twice as tall. Yeah. And it's water, so you'll be all right. You're in the air for five seconds, which is insane. This, the scary part was jumping off to where you push your bike that your bike's not gonna fall off either. Yeah, and. I mean, getting far away enough to where you don't land on those wooden stakes right there, like that's some My life. Biggest, that's some real. Yeah, that too. What's it called? Stuntman shit. You know, you're a real stuntman. Yeah, my my biggest jump into water wasn't even on video. It was like after Rick and Gary passed, uh, we had like a group ride around downtown, and we just stopped at this one part that was over water. And I don't even know how it came about, but for some reason, I was like, I'm going to go up on that overpass and ride on top of the Jersey barrier and ride off into the water. On your, with your bike? I, I think, yeah. So you landed like and I think, on your bike into the water? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Because I didn't want to let go. I didn't want to let go of the bike. I'd lose it in there. Yeah. But um, I think someone filmed it, but it was at night. You can hardly see it. But I don't know, man. I want to say maybe that was like four or five stories but i remember i remember when i was up there doing it and i jumped i just remember like bracing for impact and it not being there yet. <laughs> like, bra- like waiting for that impact and it, it's just not there yet one yeah. mississippi two mississippi it's so yeah. crazy dude. all right uh let's see what's your we talked about your favorite memorable clips um who are some are you paying attention to like young young kids in your area besides Josh De La Rosa, Who are like cult fakes' favorite younger new generation riders? Like who who do you like? Like if you could I just pick know. pick from every corner of the world and build a new four person band squad, what would it be? Uh, That's a tough one. I don't. I don't know. I. I don't know. I don't keep up with current BMX, honestly. <laughs> but but I do have a group of kids that come to my dad's skate park. Well, the skate park's closed now, but before it closed, it, we were open every Friday. And I had, like, this group of, like, three kids that would come. And there was one kid. His name was Sean. I don't know his last name. And he was, like, the most motivated. And I would just play a game of bike with him, like, every day just to, like, show nice. him the possibilities show him what's and then push him to try it yeah and yeah so sean i don't remember his name because he also lost his phone and then someone hacked his instagram and now he's not even on instagram damn so, he had, oh. and then and then his mom said 
oh, you don't have your phone anymore, so you can't go ride. I don't have a way to con- get in contact with you. So he's kind of been, but that's probably, that's like my. All right, well, shout out, shout out, area. Sean. We'll move on to yeah. the other one, which is Mount Rushmore of all time riders. Who's your four favorite? Yeah, who's your four favorite riders of all time? Um, I got two. <laughs> one, one is my locally, my my local influence pros, and then the other is my all time. So, which one do you want first? Oh, local. Let's go local. I thought you were saying you have right, two local. faces of Mount Rushmore. I was like, all right, dude, half half the project. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, so, local influence pros would be gotta say first and foremost ricky bates ricky i just bates. said he's my <laughs> biggest influence um second chad de groot because without chad we wouldn't have mission and mesh which is my stomping grounds basically um three mark mulville because i remember before i i remember when i was a kid and I would just like see Mark writing mission or, or, or yeah, writing mission. I was like, man, that guy is so cool. He's so stylish. He's awesome. Yeah. And then fast forward a couple of years and we're friends. And I remember the first time, like I drove him to uh, 688. Um, at he 688 was a skate park in Clearwater. Okay. And like he has like some legendary clips clips there. Like that was his stomping grounds. And I remember like the first time he rode with me driving to go there. And I was like, this is unreal. I can't believe Mark Mulville's with me. Yeah. So, so crazy. Ricky, Ricky, Chad, Mark, Mark and Sean Burns. Fuck yeah. Because Sean, Sean Burns went, uh, when Ricky made my first video that blew up was, the um, remakes of both Ricky. of band one and yeah. two he put it together and it was yep. i looked for it but i couldn't find it you said it was on vimeo and it was called cult fake is crazy yeah. i couldn't find no, it crazy cult remix yeah crazy cult I, I typed in cult fake bmx and i couldn't figure it out <clears throat> so oh, it damn. still exists on vimeo do you know when was the last time you yeah, looked for is, it is vimeo i don't know is vimeo still a thing yeah so I was looking for it. Crazy yeah, it's, Cult it be, Remix. Yeah, it should just be Crazy Cult Remix. <laughs> no, I don't see it. Doesn't, it doesn't come up. Damn. That's crazy. <sighs> another video of my, another video of mine that's disappeared. I have no way to ever see it again. And I think it's actually my first ever video part. I think it was before Band. Was a Johnny Devlin video. Uh, Maybe next time. Nice. You remember that? No, I, I've never heard that. On, I know Johnny, but I've never heard of Maybe Next Time. It was on um, Google Video, but Google Video. Wow, video.google.com. I remember it. I spent a lot yeah. of time on there. Dude, yeah. BM- BMX technology so, has come so far from like. I know. So crazy to think about. So I say, I say, Sean, I say Sean Burns because honestly, before him getting me on metal, I didn't, I didn't know him. He he wasn't an influence on my writing before then, but after he saw the Crazy Cult remix. He reached out to me on MySpace. Shout out Tom asked from MySpace. To, <laughs> yeah, asked me if I wanted to be on metal. That's and the... so yeah. And then from the, and then once I like found figured out who he was, I was like, oh damn, this dude's awesome. Like, yeah, Sean Burns is a fucking legend. And yeah. What is Sean Burns okay. like for all the people who don't know him? Before we go to your all time Mount Rushmore. The what's a, what's a misconception about, about Sean Burns? Uh, that he's like crazy all the time and um or maybe that he's like like crazy super energetic or even on drugs or something like that's like the biggest misconception about him but when you hang out with him it's kind of like me like just chill with random outbursts of energy yeah it's just that's what i've heard too and i was like yeah i fuck with that i like that yeah it's not a it's not crazy but like contained yeah it's not a full-time obnoxious god i'm crazy but like (laughs) yeah super super chill and then i don't know it's just like something happens that you know 
sparks a sparks, sparks an a outburst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. All time. Rushmore. All time. Here we go. Mike Escamilla. Um, I remember seeing forward and just being like, okay, I'll I'll go. I'll just say all the names first. Mark, Mike Escamilla. Aitken. Damn, I'm I'm forgetting them now. <laughs> I guess give me a Aiken. Taj. Van no Van Homan. Okay. And then Stephen Hamilton. Oh fuck yeah, Stephen Hamilton. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'd say my my favorite three videos that I would watch. Okay, Mount Mount Rushmore of videos. Let's go. That that influenced me forward of course um can i eat yep. please kill me yeah and uh it's it's a close one between system and square one hmm. system i'm gonna go ahead and say system because i think i watched it no because i remember the first time i saw aiken's part in in uh square one was just like blew my mind like how How's yeah. he doing that? Style. Yeah. Mike Haken yeah. makes bike riding look better than anybody else ever. It's crazy. It's so cool. And like um, the his what's it called? Do tour run just got reposted and just watching him do a 360, yeah. 360 one footed table to late look back is just like so sick, dude. Close, close close seconds. Close seconds to me would be Stricker and Alistair Witten. Nice. Like, yeah. I remember having gaps around town that I called the Stricker gap. Nice. And I would try and dress like Hamilton or dress like Stricker. Like, yeah. It was cool when I was watching all of your parts, like going, watching your fashion evolve. You know, you went through the punk. I mean, you're, you're <laughs> still punk rock, but like you did the, the like half colored hair type shit and you would wear the denim jackets and all that yeah. shit. And then all the, the black hair days and I don't even know, multicolored hair, whatever. It was, it's, it was cool. Yeah. I'm, uh, I forget how it was. That's a fun part. Talking. That's a, a fun part, part of, um, fun part of filming videos is also okay what do i want to wear for this clip yeah like, that's true i remember there i i remember there's i remember there's this this gap that i never did but i was like well i know there was this gap i wanted to tail whip i 360 it but i wanted to tail whip it but i remember going to try it i was like okay i gotta wear my yellow pants with my yellow tiger shirt it'll look awesome <laughs> <laughs> But I, ne but I never landed it. Sometimes it gives you that extra motivation. Like, oh, I look good today. I yeah. got to get this clip. There's no backing out, you know? If, yeah, you're feeling yourself, yeah. Yeah. If feeling you look yourself, good, you feel good, good, and then you ride good. Yeah. That's a lesson, kids. Put on your best shit, you know? Yeah. Take pride in your appearance. Put on put on your outfit. <clears throat> oh, I wanted to talk about Pat King, because I he's one of my personal favorite riders of all time. Like, What's your favorite? What's a memory that sticks out with you with being around Pat? Like, whether it's him doing a cool, crazy Smith down a curved down rail, or one of his big half cabs before they were cool. Like, Pat, Pat King's so fucking sick, dude. Oh man, yeah, dude. He's like the chillest, but funniest, and to himself, dude. Like, he just. Like I guarantee you, he still rides like every day or every other day, but he just don't give a fuck about filming all the stuff that comes with anyone it. Anyone yeah. seeing it, he just yeah. he's in his own world. That's dope. How old is he? He's is just, he younger? Oh, he's or just older? always having ideas. Is he even on Instagram? Yeah, he's younger. I don't know how much younger. Whatever, Pat King, you're a fucking legend. I love yeah. Pat King, dude. Everybody in hey, band is a legend. You know. You know what's funny? Ricky was always on top of trends. He uh, he he had a he had an Instagram in 2011. Wow! Before Instagram was big. 
Yeah, that's like right when it started. It's funny. It's yeah. uh, FL, FLA life. FLA life. Look, look, look at it right now. FLA life. Yeah. Just all one word? FLA life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's pictures of stems. Being, no, the band uh, stem. Picture. Yeah, there's no profile picture, but there's like five posts. That's cool. Yeah. We got cats with money, street drop yeah. stem and testing. Boo wrecked the kitchen with ahi tunas. Dude, this is back when Instagram was photos. <laughs> this is what my, like, I put this filter on my first Instagram post, dude. Yeah. The, the OG shit. Back in the days, dude, when Instagram was Instagram and not just yeah. an extension of Facebook or TikTok. But, you know, you adapt or die. What are you going to do for the rest of the day, Colt? Yeah. We got to wrap this up. Pat King is... Pat King is Pat King Jr. Yeah. Like JR. On IG? Pat King JR. Yeah. Yeah. But I, like I said, he don't care about the world seeing him. He's He just does his thing. Looks like he's collecting coins. Am I tripping? Yeah, that's him. Because then he's yeah. doing a he's doing a hand plant in the next clip. Yeah, he's he's finding old rare coins. That's cool. In 2017. Oh, dude, he hasn't posted in three years. Pat King doesn't give up. But Pat King Jr. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's two accounts. Anyway, Pat King's a legend. Um, what are you gonna do for the rest of the day? What? It's, it's like 4:20 out there right now. Huh? It's 4.20 for you right now. Broke up. It's 4.20 for you right now. What are you going to do for the rest of the day? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what am I going to do for the rest of the day? I don't know. This is... I don't know. I don't have plans for the rest of the day. Is there anything else that you want to touch on um, before we close this out? Yeah. Yeah, I wanted, I, wa I wanted to go back to my Rushmore and my reasons why. Okay, yeah. Like for the Mike Escamilla to me, even still to this day, obviously because of his stuntman side. Like I remember first seeing, I remember seeing that fire clip. Yeah. In forward. Yep. Blew me away. Um, I have a I have a fire clip in band four, but it's not on my bike. It's like it's the banger. Was playing in the house at Castleberry. Were you? Oh I, no, I'm I'm thinking about yeah, the, it's at the the end of the part. The Molotov, you you jumped no, no, off the picnic three, table. Oh, okay, my bad. No, I don't know. Oh no. No, the the fire clip was in band three, like after my part. Okay. But um, it was so stupid. It was so stupid, man. I put on a denim jacket, and I wet the denim jacket with water, and I put the gasoline on a backpack. But I'm an idiot, and when I put the backpack on, I tightened it. Like I tightened it tight on me so I couldn't get it off easy. Oh, and, shit. and like so I run or the band's playing. Oh, and it was and it was Matt Copeland's band called Light Yourself on Fire. Wow. So it kinda had meaning behind it. Yeah. <laughs> so I lit myself on fire while his band was playing. And then like I danced around and then when it came time to getting the backpack off, I couldn't get it off. So I had to just take like the whole jacket off. It got scary for a second. But... Yeah. It was all right. Stunt yeah, shit. I, uh, I've always been in. I've always been in the stunts. Yeah, because my my dad was a. It's crazy. My dad was a stunt man at Universal, and then I ended up going on to be a stunt man at Universal. Do you think Pogo he performer? But yeah, it's still. Stunts. <laughs> Pogo performer, but he, it's still he stunts. was. Uh, Did he ever push it he, on you? He was a stunt man. No. Nah. No. Nah. nah. He just always like supported what I wanted to do. Nice. Um, he uh, he was a stuntman in the. It was like a water show in the lagoon, where it was like boats and jet skis and sick. And it's like bad guys on boats, good guys on boats. Yeah. Like black boats were the bad guys, and the then the police boats. And uh, the one part he had was like, he was on a building. And he had a pistol. He would zip line off one building while shooting the pistol, and then he'd land in a boathouse. Then he'd like get in a safe. He'd get in a safe box. Then he'd hit a button to like 
say he's in the safe box and then like the boathouse would blow up oh shit that's pretty, pretty cool yeah pretty memorable when you're like eight when you're like eight years old so yeah, yeah. did you think that he and, died uh, when you first saw it my, my, my first <laughs> No, no. no. <laughs> but so yeah, my first my first aim my first aim screen name was Stuntman seven five two. Nice. Seven five two was my racing number. Hell so yeah. that's always been a thing for me is stunts. I I for my dad brought home uh mats one time and so I would jump like I've been jumping off the of roofs since before I was riding bikes. Yeah. Because I would jump off the roof and land on mats. Hell yeah. <laughs> and, um, and that's another reason why I like Alistair Witten too. I remember I remember when uh Rytel won the local exposure competition mm-hmm. at Mesh. Yeah. And he got on Mirico. So he invited me and our other friend Justin to go with him to go to Mira's place. And that was awesome. But I was more excited on meeting Alistair than I was Mira. Dave Mira. <laughs> nice. And uh, uh I had those McNeil bar yeah. I I had those McNeil bars that had zero sweep and I I liked them because I felt like with zero sweep you can click a turn down more cuz there's no sweep in the way. True. And uh I remember I broke them. I broke them while we were while we were there. And like we went to his, we were at Alistair's house for like a party or something, and he gave me a new pair, and I was like, "That's like one of the most memorable that's things." Dope. Was like, yeah. "This is one of my favorite pro riders," and he just gave he just gave me his handlebars. Yeah, that's amazing. How old were you yeah. at that point? How old were you when this happened? Mm, like probably like. Uh, 18 or 19 yeah maybe 20 young and stoked know. yeah but yeah i've i've yeah i've always i've always been to stunts i've always tried to like have like a uh like an acting career kind of like yeah i think the first thing i was was in was like in when i was like when i was like eight years old when i was like eight years old uh my friend was doing uh this video shoot it was like a snowball fight at blizzard beach it's like a water park at disney okay and but it was like it was going to be a snowball fight like a fake like a fake snow snowball fight and uh he told me to come with him because they needed extras in it and i remember like eight years old christmas morning uh you know how they play the macy's parade on tv but then they like in between the in between like the live stuff they have like little edited videos yeah so that's where the edited video was and i remember i have um i remember i have like a 2 second clip of just my face going like this <laughs> so that's that that was that so was you've been on tv baby <laughs> what well, so what's been the latest the thing, thing from I your ever acting got... career the latest yeah um well i was gonna say the first my first thing got well it. no that was my first but the right. first thing i got paid f- the first thing i got paid for with my bike was i was like 15 and there was this audition for an ice cream commercial but uh, the ice cream was in czechoslovakia i've never seen the commercial but um i went to this audition And it was to be on a bike. You had to do wheelies. And the other kids there, they could just ride a bike. That was it. But I could, at the time, I could do wheelies and 180s or like pivot, pivot 360s. Yeah. And they saw that and they're like, okay, yeah, you're the one. And then I get (laughs) to the shoot and little Trey Jones was there too. He was, if I was 15, if I was 15, he was 11. Nice. And he was at the shoot too baby Trey, and so and the shoot was at universal yeah and the shoot was at universal so we we did we did wheelies and then they had ramps like one going this way one going this way and we both did like 360s at the same time so yeah man that was the bro that that, i just realized that was me that was the foreshadowing of me and Trey's monster oh yeah for real and we're 360 and off ramps together for a (laughs) checklist ice cream commercial 
and then yeah. 20 years later you're doing and a I, monster shit that's amazing yeah and i don't know why i remember this because i don't remember what i did with the three with the three because we got paid 300 dollars to do that to do some yeah. wheelies and a 360 in in new york the new york area of universal I don't know why I remember this, but I remember Trey just being so excited, like, I'm going to get profile hubs with my $300. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Trey, dude. I wish I could meet Trey when he's 11 yeah. years old. That's funny. Yeah. And then and then the last... Okay, so the last thing I did was... Uh, wasn't recent, but I was on this... Sh- I was on a show called Octane Academy. Never heard and, of it, but um, go on. It was a competition type show. It was it was a competition type show. The grand prize was a Ford Raptor. I remember seeing the commercial like during a Super Bowl, and it was like submit your entry video, and it was like right after Band Three. So what I did is I just took my Band Three part, and then I just filmed like an intro of me like this just being like hey i'm cult fake i think i should be on the show because of blah 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 blah. here's my video and then so i just submitted that as my entry to get on this show nice and i got on it and i was on i was on the uh deegan i went to brian deegan's house to film this stuff no shit that's cool and uh yeah and i think like the first the first challenge was backflip a mini bike into a foam pit and then i think someone got eliminated from that and then the second challenge was an obstacle course while getting paintball shot at us from deegan and his crew (laughs) (laughs) that's i got past that and then and then the third thing was mini truck races and at that time i never the mini trucks are like they shift like a dirt bike and at that time, I never had dirt bike experience, so I lost shit. that race because I stalled it Didn't out. Didn't know how to shift. Yeah. Turn. Damn. Yeah, but I feel like if I got past that, I could have. Yeah, I feel like if I got home. past that, I could have won the truck. But yeah, <laughs> that's wild, man. And another thing I did was that there was this there was this show there was this show. It was, I think, it was a UK show called The In Betweeners. That sounds familiar. It was really popular in the yeah. UK, so they tried to make like a US version. Yeah. For MTV, and um, it was filmed at Universal, and the the episode was like Red Bull turned their like Red Bull did a remake on their library, and I just have a a scene where I'm like bunny hopping onto computer desks and writing across po- computer desks, but. Yeah, That's I would say my still influence sick. for yeah. all the things at, my my influence for all the things I've done acting or stunt wise is definitely Mike Escamilla for sure. That's fire. Anything about Aiken or Van or Steven? Um Aiken I just remember my friend Justin Herndon was like in one of those, you know, they were everywhere. Aiken clones yeah. <laughs> at that time. Yeah. Aiken clones just popping everywhere. Yeah. And my friend my friend was an Aiken clone and um yeah, I just I don't know, he's the most stylish stylish dude there was. For real. And uh and I don't know, Ham- Hamilton, I just I don't know, he, he, at that at that time he was the most unique writer like Dude, his can I eat part. No one else was doing. I got it. The song stuck in my head right now. You know, I can picture it. It's burned into my brain. I've watched it so many times. Yeah. And he's. It's cool to yeah. see that he's kind of back lately. It, he uh, just put out that part or a section for Animal not too long ago, which is dope. I don't know. I don't know what happened yeah. to Stephen Hamilton all the, over those years. I think there's a documentary out that I watched, but I don't remember. <laughs> anyway. Um. Yeah, dude. And what's your advice to young kids, young hungry kids getting into BMX and wanting to, you know, get famous or, you know, all that shit? Um, you got it. You got to be intentional, but you got to let things happen organically. Like be, be intentional 
and like work on yourself, stay consistent with your progress, but let things happen organically. Like band happen organically. When we were filming for band, the, it was never like we we gotta make this full length video, and it, you know it's gonna do good and it's gonna keep getting better. It was just, hey, let's go ride with our friends. Like yeah, you had to love. Like you, you just have to have a passion for what freedom BMX gives you yep. and not worry. Like it's a, it's a fine, it's a fine line. Like it's a fine line between, um, you know, like put like overly pushing for something you want and just letting it happen organically. Right. Yeah. You just have to have that balance. Like, yeah. Like the like like what I try and teach Taj every day is you gotta balance. You gotta balance it out. Yeah. And you gotta learn to pick your fights like shit's gonna happen organically, but you gotta like stand up for yourself and not get taken advantage of and like know your worth. I, yep. Yeah. Which is tough in the like just being being a good BMX rider, you still feel like, you know, what is my worth? You know? I, like how much money does me yeah. being a cool that's, trick that's or a, a video part generate? exactly I, I like i've always you know i don't know about your scene but the local i feel like the local orlando scene it's always had that stigma of like you're if you're you're corny if you're trying to yeah i hate that attitude sponsored you that, know yeah that was there like, when i was you're, younger yeah you're you're there's like ways to go about it. I mean, like everybody wants to get sponsored, yeah, so but I, the kids who are like outwardly like sponsor me, sponsor me. It's like, shut up, dude. I, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> but no yeah. hate towards them. I, now, now that I look back, I, I wasn't, I wasn't corny as in wanting to get sponsored, but I was corny as in, I wanted to be accepted by the, the, uh, the atmosphere I saw around me. Yeah, and there's nothing you corny about I mean? that. That's not corny. Like I saw that. I... Well, no, but that when the atmosphere is like to uh, when that when the atmosphere is like it's cool to not want. Oh yeah, want so to then, progress. So then you you, you need yourself by like suppressing yourself. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um but at the same time like you do got to know your worth like I, I I I well the thing is what what I mean is like the cockiness. Not necessarily not necessarily it's corny to want to be good, but it's corny to be cocky about being good. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like like when I, I, I after I got the X Games and I went to Ronnie about trying to get on Shadow, I think that's when I finally was like, okay, I, I have to actually, like, I have proof of my worth now. Yeah. So if, if I'm not, if I'm not getting compensated for that, then I need to go look somewhere else. Yeah. Which I never really wanted to do that because Shadow's right there in my town. Yeah. And, you know, but it just, things things get to a point where you kind of do got it and i wouldn't say as cocky but like you said know your worth right yeah and just, try, just trying to expand keep getting better if you stop getting better you stop yep. being good you know that's not true you can like learn a set of tricks and just keep doing them on cool yeah. spots but keep learning shit i think we some of we all tend to like stop learning shit around like 20 or 28 or 30 i don't know i haven't learned a new trick in a decade <laughs> yeah but it, there's still when you're Wait, riding I, street like it, the options I are still, still there yeah like i still have a less a list of clips that i still want to get it's just Hell a matter yeah. of of planning it because like i said it, it things don't things don't just happen right writing for me these days doesn't just happen as organically as it used to i have to literally plan when to ride now yeah it's different so it would be a matter of i i think my mo my most 
my most difficult thing is having a filmer. If you look at my Instagram, every video, every video for the past year or two that's on my Instagram is either filmed by Taj or one of my little 13 year old prod local prodigies. <laughs> my little, my little that's, squad, my little squadron. <laughs> that's, I, that's who I got for filmers, right? Come now. here, minions, bring it in. Yeah. Play rock, paper, draw straws yeah. to see who gets to film me. That's funny. I would love. I I would love to do another project. I would love to do a new video. It's just a matter of getting someone to work with me that is going to make it look good. Talk to Jonah. He's the he's the filmer that I know in Florida. Um or maybe he's moved, I don't know. Jonah Jachan. Yeah. I yeah, I talked to him, but it's like that the whole thing of planning like we both got yeah. things going on so it's hard to plan when we both can make it happen maybe someday i'll end up in and florida that's the same again with, uh same with burns yeah for real <laughs> everybody's busy yeah right <laughs> <laughs> i'm never coming back man um i had fun talking to you man i'm gonna i gotta go get some work done and go maybe ride We'll see. Thanks for thanks for coming on. Hey, you know what? I I said I don't have nothing else to do the rest of the day. Maybe I will go ride. Hey, let's go ride, Colt. Boom. Because this is because this has been a, this has been a good talk. I'm uh I'm motivated to go go pedal around now. Oh fuck yeah! I appreciate you coming on, man. You're a legend, and you've done been doing it. And yeah, it's uh it's I don't think we've really talked for this long ever. So it's really cool to kind of get to know you a little bit more. I know we've, yeah. we've definitely crossed paths in the years, but never sat down and talked. So I appreciate it. I hope, I <laughs> hope like, uh, I hope that I haven't been s super laggy and like, there's like big dead towards, air spots in our conversation. Because uh, towards the end, it got a little laggy. It's kind of like, yeah, your voice isn't matching with your, <laughs> <laughs> yeah same on you yeah. it, it'll it'll be fine it's it'll be a little laggy but, but pe they'll forgive us the people will forgive us all right that is all um yeah you're if you like this you're show, like this sometimes like <laughs> same <laughs> you should see you <laughs> the recording will work <laughs> I, I hope it works out well whatever so if, hey everybody thanks for watching like and subscribe if you like the show, share it with a homie. And if somebody doesn't know who Colt Fake is, send this to them so that they can learn and send them all of his video parts and go follow Colt on Instagram. And I don't know. That's it. Like and subscribe. Shout out Dig for partnering hey, on this thanks. podcast. And uh, your turn, Colt. Thanks for having me, Bobby. You're you're killing it with these. Thanks, dude. Thanks for having me, Bobby. You're killing it with these. Like I said to you the other day, <laughs> like I said to you the other day, um, every podcast that I've watched of yours, there's something relevant to my life that you're talking about. So that's really cool that you're able to, uh, you know, connect with your audience so good. Fuck yeah. I mean, I think we all have that. Like everybody, like if you've been in BMX for 10 years plus, then you know that you know the drill. That's cool to hear. I love it. And yeah, thanks to everybody out there for all the positive messages. I keep getting them and it keeps me going. So we're going to do one episode a week, every fucking week this year. Um, yeah, that's it. All right. We're going to cut. Later, guys. Uh, Hello, you've reached the end of the video. <laughs> like and subscribe and we'll see you next week. Shout out Dick. <laughs>